the University of Wisconsin Platteville Highway Technician Certification Program, Nuke Density, how to locate random sample test locations, and take an acceptance test on asphalt. In this video, we are going to demonstrate how to locate a random test location and how to take an acceptance test on asphalt. Things to remember is we have to have our worksheets with all of our random numbers. Um, or random test locations provided prior to paving. We also need some additional equipment. We need a wheel to locate our station. We also need a pocket tape to identify our offsets. Um, you can see on our project, we have laths that are out that indicate our stations where we're at on the project. And these are laid out every 50 feet on this project. So we have a single layer or a single lane, single layer of asphalt we're going to go ahead and locate our random test location and then walk you through on how to take the actual acceptance test. So first I'm going to find our test location. Um, our first random station test location is 15 plus 26 at 5.3 foot off of our reference. For this job we're going to use our left edge of pavement as our reference to measure our offset from. Um, each, each project can be a little bit different, so prior to uh, paving, you should set up your random test locations, get that all pre-approved through the engineer prior to um, actual field testing. So I got my wheel, I need to measure out 26 feet. I have a lumber crayon that I'm going to write down or mark out where my test is going to be. Um, six feet. Now my offset is 5.3 feet from the reference. We're going to use our pocket tape. <clears throat> We're going to measure all 5.3 feet, which is right here. Line them two up. That's going to be a random test location. Walk back. I'm going to grab my gauge and I'll be right back. So from the previous part two, we already standardized our gauge. We standardized our gauge on the material that we're gonna be testing. Um, so we're good to go. We have that number wrote down on our worksheet from the previous worksheet that we did in part two. So we have our test location. It's very important to make sure that the test location is clean, that there's no rocks on there, any type of uh, debris or rock They'll throw your test results off. Sometimes it's nice to have a little whisk broom that you can use. We're going to take our gauge. We're going to set it down over top of our random location. The source handle in Wisconsin needs to be with the direction of paving. This job was paved prior to, um, but we knew that this is the direction they paved. So our first position is going to be with the direction of paving. Gauge is down. Very important to check for rocking corner to corner. That ensures that this surface is flat. Any type of surface um, irregularities or depressions um, will throw off your results. So we have a good flat, clean level surface. We're with the direction of paving. Um, important, we have to set our test time. So in this gauge, we want to hit the time button. Count time, one minute. In Wisconsin, we do um, one minute test times with a rotation. So we're gonna take a one minute test in this direction, rotate the gauge, and then take another test. So we have the proper test time. Just hit yes to accept. So in order to put the handle in test position, we wanna release the safety. It drops a little and then nice and easy push it down into the backscatter position. The first position on our handle is backscatter. You can also see on our gauge it indicates a BS for backscatter. From this point we can activate our first test and you see it count down. During the tests we should step back three feet 
while the test is running. Other important things to consider while taking tests out on the grade is we want to maintain our minimum distances from equipment, manholes, um, bystanders, all the stuff that we can find in, in 815 on our minimum distances. Again, other density gauges, we want to make sure we're at a minimum of 30 feet. Um, edges of our pavement, um, unrestricted or restricted edges, one foot or one and a half foot. At the conclusion of our test, which is just about done, first thing we want to do is retract the, the handle into the safe position. It's in safe position. The next thing we want to do is we want to outline our gauge. You can do this step before or after. It doesn't matter. We want to do the very bottom of our gauge to make sure that if there was an IA or an issue with the test, Somebody can come back and do the exact footprint. We also want to indicate the direction of our source. That also is the direction of paving. So if somebody came back out, they knew their first test was in that direction. So <clears throat> there's different screens that pop up. We can toggle through them with the up and down arrows. Um, so this is our first sublot or lot one sublot one test a 1526 offset so we want to indicate our density count and moisture count on here so density count is 1776 moisture count is 220 we're going to use the down button with our wet density of 145.3 And that's what we need for our first reading. So like I said, in Wisconsin, we do two 60 second tests with 180 degree rotation in between. So we need to pick the gauge up, rotate it, set it back down exactly in our footprint. Make sure we're lined up good all the way around. We also wanna make sure again, we check for rocking we want to set our handle in the back scatter, release it from the safe position. Nice gentle push. When it locks in good, you can see it says again back scatter. We can activate our next test. Again, we want to step back three feet while the test is running. In Wisconsin, um, when we get the last or our second result from our our test here, we want to compare it to the wet density on our first test. If those two tests are within one pound of each other, a third test is not required. If they differ by more than a pound in Wisconsin, we have to rotate the gauge back to the first position and activate a third test and write those results down. So again, when the test is done, which we're almost done here again, first thing we want to do is retract our handle into the safe position. And we can go ahead and record our results. Okay, so for our, our second test, the wet density, I'll record that in this, 144.8. And we're going to use our up or down arrows to get our density count, moisture count. Density count, 1784. Moisture count, 210. So from our results, you can tell that from our first test to our second test, we only have a difference of 0 0.5. Well within our 1.0 uh, restriction in case we needed a third test. So at this point, we're able to average our first two tests and then write our average down. Um, we can compute our percent compaction. 
by using our target that was given to us um, from the lab based on the GMM that we discussed earlier to come up with our percent density. So if we average these two, we're going to come up with an average of 145.1. We divide that over our 153.7, and that turns out to be our percent compaction for this location. If we did need that third test, we would record it here, and then we would follow the guidelines in the CMM on how to compute percent compaction. So lastly, the only thing we have to do is we want to, on the pavement, record our results so that if another person wants to check what we had in this location. So we want to write our lot number, which is 1-1A. Our first result was a 145.3, and we had a 144.8, for an average of 145.1. I can quickly do the math on our percent compaction. We take 145.1 divided by our target, which is 153.7. We come up with a 94.4%. We want to record that on our worksheet also. So, in this location, we're well above our required minimum, which was 91%. On this location, we're done. We can continue on.